Hello, ladies. Sorry for the one minute being late, but it's YouTube not letting me. <laughs> uh, so I thought because I know everybody loves Mokumegane and we are still in the beginning of autumn uh, to do another Mokumegane that is autumn, autumn themed and uh, something that you will all enjoy. Um, I have to warn you that today's live will probably not last an hour because I had another one of my uh, no sleep nights. Actually, it was a whole thing. Remember that back in August when the power company came and they cut branches, they the branches fell and messed up like a four foot piece of fence that kind of got it's not completely to the ground but it's kind of like this and and last night around 11 something my first thought was like oh my god i locked whisper in the craft room i mean it's been more than two years and it's still and then I realized that the whole thing was outside. There was, uh, there was at least one dog uh, baying, pretty much. And I went in the back. I turned on the porch light. Of course, I didn't go outside. And sure enough, there were two hounds in my backyard running back and forth. And you could hear them because there's some brush in the back. You could hear them trying to get back out through wherever they came in from. So, I mean, it was past 11 o'clock at night. I was afraid because the, the obvious solution was to uh, go on the side of the driveway and unlock the gate and let them out. But I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't going at my age at night going to let two dogs out from my backyard. Fortunately, I hear somebody, you know, whistling for a dog. So I go in the front yard and I start, hello, 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 anybody there? And finally a young guy comes and he, apparently somebody had opened the gate to his backyard and the dogs ran away. But anyway, he, I gave him the, <laughs> the key and he went ahead and unlocked the gate and got them out struggled with them a little bit to get them under control because they were all hyper and stuff i gave them some water anyway by the time the whole thing was done and over uh it was close to midnight but by by now i was bright awake took me about two and a half hours to be able to fall asleep so i fell asleep a little bit after two o'clock and then, of course, I woke up at 4.30, so <laughs> and I wasn't able to go back to sleep. So I didn't dare to try and sleep after 10 because I didn't want to sleep through the live. So I'm going to take a long nap after the live is over. So l long story that I didn't make very short, but to explain why the live today might not last an hour. Okay, so number one, I already made the, the Skinner blends for this. And this one is one of my favorites and I know not a, a, a lot of people's favorites. It's actually uh, white at this end, cadmium yellow and the alizarin crimson. And the other one, I actually used the fluorescent with a little bit of white and a little bit of jungle. And remember, if you do not have jungle, because it's not manufactured anymore, um, on my website, on the very first page, it's pinned. Let me actually show you. So on kalyanadesign.com is a Primo Jungle Green color recipe. I know that, um, there is a slightly different uh, recipe color out from Sculpey. It's entirely up to you, but this is the one that I use. And uh, this is the one that I've been using for a lot of uh, other stuff, even if I still have some 
uh, jungle green. I don't want to get out of it. So, um, and this is, give me a second because I threw away the wrapper. Uh, this. the fluorescent because I forgot if it is the green oh come on yeah I guess it is fluorescent yellow and no it's not fluorescent yellow it should be fluorescent green not an accent and you know that Trish does have some glow in the dark as well I need to get myself the new bright green pearl and uh, burnt orange and uh, there's a few colors that I'm waiting to and uh, the other thing that I want to try is the forest green let me get back on the display because it looks like it might be a very good Christmas um, thing so no it's not fluorescent yellow it's it's fluorescent green let me see if I can fish it from the trash can here no it is fluorescent yellow and if on the on the um, on the screen on the website it looks more yellow than green and in real life it looks more green than yellow but anyway let's get get on uh, I actually like it and uh, even if it was a little chilly yesterday and last night excuse me you're supposed to get like upper um, 70s with up uh, highs with upper 50s lows at night so I love this weather a lot okay so I'm going to if, if you can see I did uh, make them about the same width and what I'm going to add to it is going to be white and black. All right. So first thing that I'm going to do is to cut this in two. This is on the thickest setting. Okay. On my uh, makings, which is a little bit thicker than the regular other um, pasta machine. So I'm going to put it through a two on the making so we uh, we are all on the same page it's not a huge difference in uh, all right so I'm going to cut these in two and then I'm going to have a one black and one white so this should be about right and I'm going to cut them on the practically thinnest possible setting And I, I need two pieces of it and I'm going to do the same with the black so, oops, sorry let me get a
So the same thing happening with the black on the thinnest. Yeah, there was a, a cold snap kind of like throughout the Midwest as the Canadians forgot their fridge do freezer doors open and let's do another one and then what I'm going to do once again I'm going to actually stack the black and the white get them through the machine again on the same thin setting all right now I know I'm going to get some extra here but it's fine all righty so actually need three of them and the way that it goes the white goes towards the yellow so goes like this and then on top of it this is going to get backwards so if on the if on the yellow where the laser and crimson the the light part is here and the dark part is here on the fluorescent yellow with jungle green it will be backwards because we are going to create a specific pretty pattern and again it's going to be the same the black is going to be this so if the first one was with the white at the bottom this one will be with the black at the bottom because we want the black to be against the fluorescent yellow and the white to be against the yellow and the lizard and crimson so the same thing here I'm going to turn again the the white towards the yellow and this goes backwards and once again I'm going to just pull this to thin it out some once again we want the black towards the yellow green and the white towards the uh, yellow and the lizard and crimson because when we uh, thin it out and stack it's going to stack perfectly all right so now I'm going to start thinning them out some and as always flip it over because otherwise what happens is that only the top one gets wider and we don't want that to happen and what we want to do is to get it to the thicker setting on the pasta machine pretty much length Uh, thickness, not length. I'm sorry. Alright, and just to get things a little bit neater, I'm going to trim this. And now we go with it through the machine on the thicker setting. I 
saying that this is plenty good. I'm going to grab this and put it aside. And I'm going to grab this and put it aside. And remember, if you haven't watched that before and you want to watch it, so it's going to be six. Look in the playlists on my channel. So seven. So three and a half. Um, and look for the Mokumegane mini series because there's a lot of good stuff there. And stack. And once again, it's three and a half, so it's going to be 175. I know I forgot who said that, but I know I read on uh, on uh, Facebook. It was on my news feed. Somebody said that uh, I knew, and I told my teacher at the time. I think it was that I will not use algebra in my life, like ever, and so far it's proven true. And I'm like, dude, I use algebra all the time, especially on calculating stuff on here, how it should go. Okay, so we have a good number of stacks. How many were they? Uh, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve stacks. So we have twelve stacks here. And just gently flatten it just a little bit, not a lot. But you want to kind of get into a good thing here. And um, why brought in. Uh, in talk the, the the whole thing with the mini series is because there I told you that um, that's a good thing to use the remnants the edges that you cut off as a buffer at the bottom of your stack so that you can uh, you can cut pretty much all the way to the end of your stack. So I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to start deforming from here. And I know I did not say uh, hi to everybody. Thank you for making it Elaine. Hi Ilyanka. Ah, I forgot who C Word Creations is. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Hi Sharon. Hi Carlene. Hi Karen. Uh, I don't know who Galactic Egg is. Hi, Darla. Hi, Kanchana. And that is it. Yeah, Karen, I would faint at that. Um, below 50, I faint. Anyway, so I'm going to get this. If you don't have this, this is the uh, Water Lily Petal Cutter from Poly Clay Play, and you can find it on my Amazon Influencer Store as well. And it's a set of three. And I'm going to use this and first I'm going to do this. And if you're wondering why I made these colors, we'll discuss this in a second when I'm pretty much almost done with this. So I got this done. Then I'm going to grab the smallest one. It's easier to go from the largest to the smallest it's easier to see what you're doing because it's easier to see on the outside of the cutter than just try to peek inside to see if you're okay especially when you have a camera in the way <laughs> but uh, yeah so then I got this 
so we got this to start with next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a thick blade or you can use the uh, blunt part of your uh, rigid blade I'm going to use this one because as I'm tired I'm not sure if my hands will be able to control very good and this is a very thick blade it's the one from tiny Pandora So if you didn't realize what I'm, where I'm going with it, it's pretty much making like a leaf, as you can see. And then I am going to grab a toothpick. And just do a line. Little holes here, and then very important. No, if I have it handy, but if not, I'm going to grab something else that I might not find. Just a second, because I do have something here. I'm almost to the point of getting everything in place where it belongs, but not there yet. Yeah, it's going to be an autumn leaves, but a more colorful, all colors and stuff thing. I had a needle here. I don't find my needle. Yeah, I still didn't find my... Uh, heat gun. I have no idea where it is or what I did with it. Um, there's a smaller one here. It's a four, but I'm not going to use the fourth one. Well, I'm going to do to use still the, because I cannot find the other one. Just go in the middle of this and only on one side. And this should be good enough and then reconstitute it, reconsolidate it a little bit. And why you want to do that? Because by reconsolidate it, you're going to form some waves. And that's something that you want to do because you want all these little holes to be uh, closed, not to be holes. I know that in some of the patterns of like Julie Picarello, those are kept as holes, but it is not the case here. We just want a nice uh, color combination. And then I'm going to flatten them once again, because what I want is to have a color through a color combination through reconsolidation. As I said, when you consolidate it, there will be some more of these forming up. So more patterns in the Mokumegane. As you can see, it's not a very with a lot of deformation Mokumegane. It's going to be quite uh, delicate, but we do want a little bit of deformation so we can get nice so first go one side flip it over then change 90 degrees flip over go again flip over and then one more reconsolidation And when you know that you're uh, good is when you start to see the black through the white, uh, talking about when you do go uh, with it through the machine. After you do the very first stacking of your pieces. And 
and you want to kind of double the height that it is before you start consolidating just to know how long you consolidate so this should be good and now for the last little bit of flattening i'm not going to press a lot so a little bit flip it over a little bit 90 degrees flip it over a little bit flip it over a little bit and this should be my my full thing now let me grab some uh, wax paper to place my slices on and I'm going to put the buffer on the bottom and grab a thin and you can use a long thin one or you can use a short uh, cane slicer remember these you can find them in a in a set the 8 inch one and the 4 inch one on a polyclay play for like 475 but you can also find it on my amazon uh, it's all the way in the bottom in the blades thing and it's gonna might probably take longer to come from amazon then and i'm going to try and slice thin leaves uh, thin slices not leaves let me grab some armor all because I have sticky white and sticky black there uh you're going to ask me why don't you shave well i could shave but i kind of want to go with more solid pieces i think this this blade is messed up kind of sort of probably need to open a new short one as well And it helps if you use the sharp side. drop something but I think I'm gonna use the try and use the big one no. I 
I hate this super sticky clay. I normally I would suggest that you should uh, let this cool off. There's a reason why I cannot really cut thinner slices more. Uh, what you call it? More uh, shaven because it's super thick, sticky. And believe me my blades are very sharp at least this one I think I used it like three times not more suggestion is to put it in the fridge and then cut it you'll get way more slices than what I'm getting now but it's super warm so it's super sticky okay so I got to the, to the buffer zone now my thing is going to be to try and find and this I'm going to use for something I'll show you here in a minute I'm going to try and find the if I have any semi identical at least a little bit identical so I'm going to grab these two somewhere and just I can actually use this one as well but I'm going to get it through the machine on a thinner setting all right so let's place these here so I got this and I'm going to get it through the machine at a certain thickness so let's say I'm going to go with the, the second thickest and I'm going to go like this and just see whenever it becomes all even going to three is nice and even well not this part but this is perfect for what I want to do and remember when I showed you these you can find them in the influencer store and let's use I'm gonna do we're gonna put them together next time 
or I'm gonna do a short thing. So which should I use? Not this because it doesn't show all the prettiness. Let's use this hexagon because it shows a lot of the stuff. And the smallish one. And we're gonna do shoulder huggers. should be good and this should be good and shape I think this should work so I'm gonna use this here and I'm gonna use this here There we go, the first two pairs of earrings. Oh, come on. Remember, don't fret too much over the neatness of the edges because that can be fixed in two seconds with the sandpaper. Got two pairs of earrings. We put them aside to go in the oven. And then I'm going to grab this again and use it as base on a thinner thickness. grab some of the other pretty stuff and I do have here a mirror type thing so let me put this here and this here and look for another one that would kind of fit the smaller things mm, this should work All right. and once again like before I'm going to get it through the machine to get it more or less even Starting with the thickest, and then the next one, now they are fairly even, all these areas, I mean I need this area and I need these areas, so 
think I'm, I need something that's a little more ovalish. So, do I have anything ovalish here? No, round. Oh, there we go. We have a diamond. No, it doesn't work very good. Mm. Of course, I'm not going to be able to get the full prettiness of this. So, yeah, I'm going to make that just plain. And this. So, this goes on the edge here. Sorry, I need one of my mirrors to press. And get this other one. On the same. this and these I can use some smaller ones let's go for this this and then I can use another one to make uh, smaller things to make those dangries but, and this again can be used for base. Generally, when you cut the slices in a Mokumegane, you do have the Natasha effect, obviously. Not a perfect Natasha effect like in a, one of those canes, but... Anyway, you can uh, I'm going to work on another one to get uh, a smaller ones for these to put them together. But yeah, this is a uh, I need to D. This is a Colors of Autumn. And why I did choose these. Just a second to put this out of the way. As I told you what happens if I don't. Oh. We go to fall color 2023. Um, let me get in the display. Uh, you can see here the whole um, a thing with the uh, the yellow and the lizard and crimson. These are all uh, colors that you can get. So these combinations, I just wanted it to be a little bit uh, stronger. Uh, this is mostly for decoration, right? Um, but you can use any of these uh, in your Mokumegane. What I would do, I would combine, for example, I would combine this uh, ash gray, dark slate, whatever. Even if you don't have the exact colors, but if you have something similar to uh, tan to almond brown, and this is the same exact type of setting that I used my to now. Um, don't go for it. Don't go with the three different colors. Go only with two. And like here, I wouldn't use the the black. Okay, I would use only, but this is pretty much what we use the vermilion and selective, yeah, selective yellow. 
And what I did use extra was that fluorescent uh, yellow. And that one I found it in um, in a more um, bold type of uh, thing. So you can see what the um, uh, Pantone gives us for this fall. But what I added, that's my per was my personal choice, even if it might not be a fully super trend, is that fluorescent yellow that I think makes a great um, thing. And I did find it in more uh, youth um, youth um, focused type of um, websites okay so this is pretty much how you can do if you do not like it you can replace it with um, considering that it is with a jungle green I would um, actually mix a uh, if you want to absolutely replace this uh, fluorescent yellow okay what I would do, I would get some, like using this, okay, using the, not this one, this one, the one and a half, right, uh, I would use one part green, like green, green, one part ultramarine, and about a quarter part black and on the other side I would use I mean this would be the dark side and just um, what you call it stack the blue and the uh, green one on top of the other so on this other side two parts of white and one eighth of black. I got fruits from Aldi's and I have again fruit flies in the house. And this is how you create the secondary one that will not use the instead of the one with the uh, fluorescent yellow. Okay, so this is a way of doing some nice, um, very firmly underlined colors mokumegane that wouldn't be too rich and each color would uh, pretty much bring out the other and as you can see the um, the black and the white this is more towards the the base so that's why it's so much white but otherwise the black and the white barely show they what they do they kind of frame the other colors okay so I hope you liked it and you will try something similar and uh, I will see you next Sunday. Tomorrow I'm getting my COVID booster so I'll probably be out of commission for two or three days. I don't know how it's going to be. We'll see, I guess. So wish me luck. And thank you for being here. Don't forget to thumbs up. Don't forget to use my affiliate links. And I shall see you next Sunday. Thank you. Bye.